Hey guys, what's going on? Kyle here with the Car Guys, bringing you brand new video. And today we're going to be talking about one thing and one thing only. And people want to hear everybody's opinions on this as well. And that is the top five decks, which is the April 11th, 2016 format. I think it's still pretty defined about what the best decks are, but people might toss up maybe one and two, maybe, just depending. But I'm going to go ahead and get into my list here. And we're going to go from number five. To number one. Starting off with number five, um, I think that you know it, it still deserves the number five spot, even though it literally just got destroyed on the list. Um, if you go back and look at when Pepe first became a thing, um, obviously number five is going to be Draco Pals. When it first came into light with Lusters and all this other fun stuff with uh, the clowns and Brilliant Fusion, um, my team, the whole team that I've I've got, Blair, Cody, and all of them. We kind of created a, like a, a, a rough draft of the list, and it came it, it came out pretty well. Um, as you guys saw, the I think it was like the first or second weekend, like the first regionals that came out for that format. You know, both Blair and Cody top aided or went undefeated in their respective regionals with it. Blair ended up um, using a sort of similar deck as he did to that with. Uh, uh, with the coming of ARG Orlando and the first uh, major tournament in 2016 as you guys see Blair ended up actually winning that tournament um, and props to Blair awesome guy my awesome uh, player for my team and from there um, a lot of people kind of known were, were ref referring to the car guys as you know some of the best uh, you know Pepe players Pendul whatever you want to call it, the pendulum deck players, and um, we you can you can like go back and look at our group messages. Uh, we were religiously looking at that deck, different aspects of that deck. We used so many different types of ways you could play it within the extra deck, within the extra, like everything else. And now with all the cards that now have been you know taken out of the deck, right? So you're looking at first off Upstart Goblin being here. I think we needed to play Upstart now in that in you know in the format we currently have going into this. We needed we needed Upstart. Uh, that was one card that was going to get us everywhere. We just implemented Chicken Games in our deck, and um, and that got banned. Um, Wavering Eyes got banned as well. Uh, knowing that Upstart went to one, Wavering Eyes got banned. So we don't have three Rotas in our deck where we can just slap down two Pendulums and Rota and then make a humongous board. Ignister Prominence got hit the one. That's a one humongous thing that happened to the deck and also face off went to one so we're looking at a state of this deck now where you're gonna have to straight improvise in so many different engines to make this deck work um, I don't think it can really compete to the standard as if we want it to compete. Obviously we could probably start with a dark engine again and do a different few other engines along with it as well. Wisdom I went to one, we might be able to splash a Wisdom I in the deck. But going on with this particular format with the things that were hitting the things that were brought back, even though like they only brought back like Mask of Restrict and they brought back the mock. I, I don't I don't think that, you know, decks can can um Still hold up to the Draco Draco Pals, you know, standard. But I think that every other deck that I'm going to mention after this is a clear, you know, deck that can just destroy, you know, Draco Pals at any given time. Um, with that being said, um, you know, Draco Pals, you know, matchup versus Cosmos is really just non-existent at this point. Um, you know, Cosmos can outwin Ignister really easily, um, and you know, there's not really a way to get it back. Um, because Cosmos have a way to, you know, we can play Emerald, but Cosmos have a way to destroy your Ignis, your Promise, so they can just banish it all together. And you can't even, ha you don't even have access to it for the rest of the game. So, looking at that standpoint, you know, them being able to just go, Dr. Destroyer, kill your tuner, you can bring it back, go Ignis, and they Cosmojo you. So you're sitting on, they're sitting on Forerunner, and a you have a banished Ignis, and you can't do anything with it. So that's one humongous problem with the deck that we don't have really many outs at all to ships. Like at this point, I, Blair and I were talking about you know main deck maining uh, two more or another another utopia, another lightning. So playing a like two utopia, two lightning. I'm I'm not really sure with that entire deck anymore. Number four, 
coming in on the list is actually going to be mermails. Um, mermails still hold strong. You can definitely play it in different types of ways. The Atlantean build or the Atlantean mermail build. Um, I think that with this particular deck now, um, it still runs the exact same. Of course, Norden went to one, but you play through Instant Fusion to get to that one Norden anyway. That's the only thing that really hurt the deck at all was that one was you know being able to not get to that Norton to get your extra Dragoon Surge. The deck literally can run the same way. You can play the Atlanteans with it, the Vermeils, and play the deck the way you want to. The deck didn't get touched at all. And that's why I think it went from, I think, a number six or five to number four position. Um, now, since Draco Pals are gone, Draco Pals can really just, you know, take your hit and then you might not be able to kill them. And then them just overpower you and end up winning from there. And, and you know, that standpoint. So, I feel like Mermails, you know, are a big contender for, you know, Know, this particular thing as well. I've seen a few at regionals. Um, they've been at top tables at YCS's ARGs, and then they ended up taking an ARG actually not too long ago. So I think even with Draco Paz being the best deck back in that format, Mermel's winning. They definitely do have a shot now of doing very well, uh, being you know Dweller, Dark Hole, and things along those lines with that one instant fusion that they can utilize their Norden with. And plus, if they go you know Emerald, bring it back, they can do it again. But one Norden does not hurt the deck whatsoever. So that's like the only thing that I can really see or really hurt that deck, but it really didn't even hurt that deck. Looking at number three now, guys, is going to be Monarchs. Now, there's different ways to actually play this deck. You have the uh, the standard, you know, domain, no extra deck Monarchs, and then you actually have the, um, the XYZ Monarchs. You have actually a different couple different variants with it. Uh, a guy actually ended up top eighting the Spartanburg Regional with an XYZ deck that was playing like rank eights, which is pretty cool, things along those lines. And um, it, it was very unique. And then there's a type that kind of like Patrick was playing. They're all playing like brilliant fusions and stuff in the deck. And you can just really cycle through your deck, use primes, go into rank fives and spam the heck of your opponent. Um, there's another version with, you know, the red layer and the blue layer uh, Power Ranger Super Quantum cards, and you can just abuse the Super Quantum cards with the Monarchs, and then be able to just spam out more Xyz with the Prime, and it, the deck is just retarded. So, this deck obviously has a good strong matchup versus Cosmo. Cosmo being one of the best decks, of course, in this particular form I'm gonna get to in a moment. Um, now, Cosmo's you know, get hindered by their cards getting tributed. Um, and so if they get tributed, they obviously don't get their effects to banish and things, things along those lines. So Monarchs have a really good uh, way of outing a big board of ships as well, being able to, you know, Stormforth one domain into Erebus, boom, you know, spin the other, and now your board has been outed and you have an Erebus on the field and a domain, even though the domain really doesn't matter. The main part of domain now in this particular format, I think, not even against BA. It, of course, the deck is still fairly decent against BA if you play it right. But now, um, being able just to out an entire board with just like two cards is really good. Domain, basically using for like an Ether Erebus play, um, can, can be very devastating. And I think the new card, the new Monarch that came out is a really good card as well. I think that, you know, Monarchs definitely could become a number two contender. But right now, I think obviously the two, two decks I'm gonna talk about in the form of BA and Cosmo just, you know, definitely override that altogether. Now for number two. Uh, number two, I'm going to actually stay Cosmos. Uh, I don't think they're number one at all. I think Cosmos have a very strong matchup versus every single deck. Don't get me wrong, Cosmo is just a, it, it's not even a hit or miss. The, the deck is very powerful. Um, I think at this point in time, it's a very close second that would be A. But right now, Cosmo has a very good matchup versus everything. Dart to Shore is broken. Obviously, like the one thing that they hit in the deck, um, well, technically you could say two things they hit in the deck. Um, they hit Eteli to two, which really, I don't think, really hindered the deck at all. Um, they, they put Reasoning to one, but a lot of players didn't even play Reasoning. Um, not to bash the bad players or anything, or players that thought Reasoning was good. Reasoning was not really good in that deck at all, uh, you know, with the progression of the deck. Now, you know, seeing a lot more control with traps is the best way to go. You don't want to mill your traps and just put yourself out of the game altogether. Now, with this particular ratio, you're looking at two Itelli, um, but you can also splash in that one, um, that one uh, reasoning now. It might be okay. That's a thing that you might be able to try. Uh, of course, reasoning's really good because you're, you don't want your opponent to, you know, um, 
you don't want your opponent to hit the tin can, but you don't want them also to hit the sh the uh, the uh, dark destroyer because they can just get tin can anyway. And if they have a Cosmo Town, then that just adds on more pressure, more pressure, more pressure. Um, I think one card they could have hit in the deck to be okay, uh, honestly, was going to be Cosmo Town, but they didn't. It's fine. I think it's an engine card that the deck, you know, so desperately needs. Um, I think that. You know, the deck has a very, very strong matchup against Burning Abyss as well, but on the opposite side, you know, BA using double F0, it can push for a lot of damage fairly quick as well and use their trap cards to utilize the game into, or, you know, shape the game into a form where they can actually, you know, end up winning the game. Uh, that's pretty much it for Cosmos. I mean, the deck is pretty self explanatory. It just, it, it's a toss up between the two. Now, for number one, I do think obviously Burning Abyss is the best. Now, there's two different types of Burning Abyss, uh, and that's the pure Burning Abyss with the, uh, with the speed roids and the BA cards. As you guys saw in Noah's video, um, you'll see a little thing right up here that'll link you over to his video that he top aided a regional with. Um, I think that's probably the best version of the deck. Don't get me wrong, I think PK Fire is the best. Blair and I have different opinions on it, but I think PK Fire is obviously the next best thing. Um, with Pure BA, I think it's very consistent. You Right now in this particular format, you want to see consistency. I think it's the most powerful deck, and it's the way to disrupt your opponent the best. Um, Beatrice Turbo, you know... Why don't you? Um, I think, you know, going Beatrice and have Farfa to disrupt your opponent's plays, Cal Cab, things along those lines can just really just ruin your opponent and just you can just outright OTK them the next turn. On the flip side, uh, PK Fire is very good for multiple reasons. Dante's mill your cards. You can actually go into Break Sword, Break Sword, pop itself. It's like, acts just like a Diamond Dyer or a Scrap Dragon. Pop itself, get two more Phantom Knights out from your grave, they get a level four against Cosmos. Now, think about it like this. You go into Thanatos or Thanatos or whatever, or you can go Key Beetle that has the 1,000 boost. So you can literally sit now on like a 3,500 a Key Beetle or like a 3,450, for however big Thanatos is, plus 1,000 of his, you know, Thanatos that can be that big with that effect, it's going to be very hard to get over these. And especially if you can like Key Beetle uh, Mask of Mask of Restrict or, you know, Key Beetle and any Floodgate that could hinder Cosmos, it could be very brutal. And PK Fire has that option of with the Fog Blade to actually go in and just OTK you as well. It's a very big toss up between PK Fire and Burning Abyss. I think that if you want to not, if you want to have the consistency, definitely pay, you know, the pure Burning Abyss with the Speed Roids. If not, I would definitely suggest P PK Fire. Either one of the decks is very well. I think Beatrice is all around a great card. Um, I went to a regional this past weekend. Uh, in Spartanburg, and I don't even know how to play BA, but I read Beatrice a couple times. That card's broken. If I don't know what it, the, you know, the cards do, and I read that one card and I knew it was broken, ridiculous. But that's pretty much it for me, guys. Let me know what you guys think of your top five decks are in this current format. I know all you competitive players want to, um, you know, express your opinions on everything. I love to, I read every single comment you guys put. So if you guys don't mind, definitely leave them in the comments below. That's pretty much it for me, guys. And also, before I go, one more thing. If this video can reach 100 likes, I actually have a girlfriend. I'm not gay, guys. I promise you. I have a girlfriend now, which is mind-blowing, but she actually wants to learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. If you guys, um, if you guys want to uh, see me teach her how to play the game, kind of go over a few different rules and how the Yu-Gi-Oh works, definitely leave a like on this video. If this, if this video gets 100 likes, I'll go ahead and make these videos and make a little series out of it. But that's pretty much it for me, guys. I'm Kyle with the car, guys, and we'll see you guys later. Peace.